Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Anthony Joshua promoter Eddie Hearn says if they can fit in a Tyson Fury title defense, yes, please stay tuned. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button, also subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chat channel donations, the Venmo donations, and the Patreon family. We are working. Lots going on in the heavyweight division. March is going to be cracking for the heavyweight division. The end of March, you have Anthony Joshua going after a third, actually fourth belt, technically. Joseph Parker's belt, the WBO belt, in a unification. And then at the beginning of the month, March 3rd, I believe, Deontay Wilder in a tough test that will give him clout. And that's against Luis Ortiz. If he is able to beat him, that's going to be a signature win on his resume. Now, Tyson Fury, he's coming back to the sport. He made that clear in a lot of points in 2017. We don't have an actual date, but it looks like he's going to get his license back and get the ball rolling for his career. He did say a message to the weightlifter. And he was saying all this about how he doesn't need a tune-up fight and this, that, and the third. Now, Eddie Hearn, promoter of Anthony Joshua, he did an interview with Sky Sports. Check that out. Link in the description. He had some interesting things to say. He said the priority is Joseph Parker. He says, but if they can make a Tyson Fury fight, yes, please. He says a Tyson Fury fight, it could happen in the summer. If he wants to go straight into that fight, no problem for Anthony Joshua. He should have some warm-up fights, but if he looks bad in them, it decreases the value of the fight, and it might decrease the interest for the fight. And Eddie Hearn, to his credit, he did say, we want the best version of Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury's been out since November 2015, when the movie Creed came out, and they're already working on a sequel that's probably going to come out, I think, this year. So that just goes to show you how long it's been since Tyson Fury has been in the ring. And he says, we want the best Tyson Fury because we don't want those excuses. But I want to give my thoughts. This is my thoughts. My thoughts are, why even spend so much time talking about Tyson Fury in terms of a relevant fight for Joshua at this point? Now, I like Tyson Fury, just like Eddie Hearn was saying in this interview. He's a character. He's good for the sport of boxing. He also says that instead of tweeting, he needs to get behind the table and actually work out the fight and, and negotiate instead of just getting on social media and stuff like that but to me i've said this time and time again and i'm gonna stand by this and i'm gonna stand on top of what i'm saying i have no interest in seeing tyson fury in a fight with a champion even though some of those belts everyone's belt except for deontay wilder deontay wilder already had his belt despite uh tyson fury beating klitschko but everyone else is, who has a belt right now is as a result of Tyson Fury and him relinquishing the belt. But I have no interest in seeing Tyson Fury in a title fight until he gets some tune-ups. Once he does that and proves he is the same fighter, the cocaine in his system back in 2015 and whatever he did after that when he knew he had to relinquish the title, because you gotta keep in mind, and I'm not, I'm not gonna speculate what he did or didn't do, but we do know he had two drug tests that he failed having cocaine in his system. But if you've been out of the spotlight since that point and you knew you weren't in competition, who knows? You could have been drinking crazy. You could have been still doing cocaine. You could have been doing really whatever because you know you're not going to have any in-fight VADA testing or anything because you're not even an active fighter. You're suspended. Stuff like that. So it's all speculation on what he did after that point. But what we do know is he was at least doing cocaine then. That's why the Klitschko rematch with Tyson Fury fell apart. And then Klitschko went on to fight AJ. Facts. But me, like I said, I I'm willing to let someone bygones be bygones and all that good shit. But at the end of the day, Tyson Fury got to show me something. You don't just go like it's just like let's say in elementary school when you're in the hot lunch line right you don't just get to go to the bathroom go visit with your friends who are already at the bench and then come back and, and you still get your spot in line there's other people waiting and who've been waiting to get food on their tray you know what i'm saying 
So Tyson Fury, he's not above that process. So to me, if he's the same fighter, that's great. That makes the division better. But he has to show me that. Fight Shannon Briggs. Fight um, Dillian White, Lucas Brown winner. You know what I mean? Fight one of those types of fight. Gerald Washington. Fight any of these guys like that. So we can at least see what you're looking like. And see that the drugs in your system at that point. Or the, the misery and the depression. And mental health issues. And sudden ballooning up in weight hasn't taken a toll so to me eddie hearn keeps talking about tyson fury in any capacity talking about oh we'll fight him in the summer even though he's treading lightly he's a promoter so he's been in the business so he's he's not he's like oh we want the best tyson fury listen i think eddie hearn should make this abundantly clear and stop talking about tyson fury until like say something to the effect of we tight he he's saying oh we can go straight away into it. AJ has no problem straight away, but we want the best Tyson Fury. So that doesn't make sense if you really think about what he's saying. He says the fight with Tyson Fury and AJ could happen in the summer. If he wants to go straight into the fight, that's no problem for AJ. But then in the same breath, see, this is what I call promoter double talk. In the same breath, he says that we want the best Tyson Fury. So we know it's going to be hard to facilitate or lock in and, and say that Ty this is the best Tyson Fury and he's the same person if we haven't seen him in at least a tune-up. So that's the promoter double talk where he's saying, oh yeah, he can go straight into an AJ fight if he negotiates it, but we want the best Tyson Fury. But I think he should have some, some tune-ups. Listen, I think Eddie Hearn should be like, we're not fighting Tyson Fury until he climbs back up the ladder. And then if he does have a couple of tune-ups and he still wants to fight Joshua, and he's proven that he's back and he can make weight in one or two camps or so then that's a big domestic fight let's get it cracking so to me it should be joseph parker if wilder gets past luis ortiz then they should be gunning for wilder this whole tyson fury talk is is it's, it's too big of an asterisk because we do not know what version of tyson fury will show up i mean I told you guys, even with the Mayweather McGregor situation, yes, we know Floyd Mayweather is, he's top class in terms of a boxer, but one of the variables that made the fight even worth a damn was the fact that curiosity of an MMA fighter, what would he try to do, what would he do in the ring, you, you know what I mean, you, you never really know if you've never seen that person purely box, you know he's a good striker. But the other element was the fact that Floyd had been on the couch for two years. And we know that Father Time is undefeated. So it had the right ingredients at the right time for people to believe in that fight or believe Conor McGregor had a chance for some. I didn't believe that, but I'm just saying that's what some people felt because of the timing and boxing timing is everything. You know what I mean? Had Floyd, let's say, let's say the year Floyd fought Robert Guerrero in May and then he fought Canelo Alvarez in September if he would have fought Conor McGregor that year in December then I don't think the fight would generate the same level of interest because Floyd was looking too sharp in those two fights but again the fact that he is on a two-year layoff at an age at an advanced age you, you kind of like hmm maybe if he slows down maybe Conor McGregor could clip him with something He's supposed to be a big puncher you know what i mean so there's a little bit of enigma and mystique so that's where tyson fury's at yes he's a great boxer he uses his frame he, he moves well even when he's out of shape but it's just too much of a unknown for him to be like catapulted into these world title fights without no type of tune-up and he hasn't done shit in two years and it's probably longer than that now so I, I think Team Joshua should focus on Joseph Parker. They get past that, make the Wilder fight. If Wilder gets past Luis Ortiz, that's the fight that matters. And like Eddie Hearn saying in his interview, Joshua wants to be undisputed. Let's go. Let me know your thoughts. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is ego, son and all.
So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button, and you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.